And, it, and, and, and the added benefit, again, is that I've heard, you know, horror stories of, of people making the payment and then the, pay, the, the recipient holding the check and not depositing it. And then there's no proof as to when the payment was actually made. But through the account history, we can um, verify those records and certify those for court if necessary. Now, if you're the payee, though, if you're not getting your child support payments on time or getting them at all, this system will help you be able to at least receive them. And then it's more beneficial because you don't have to resort to any type of private lawsuits. That's correct. Um, not only does it allow them to allow the recipient to receive them, um, but sometimes people are not home in time to go to the bank to deposit the check. This way, it's directly deposited into their private account. Nobody knows their account number, and it's automatically in there when they need it to be. So sometimes the recipient's um, away for work or not doesn't get home until. After the bank closes, they, they have their check in the, in the account. And also, if you're the payee and you have to resort to a private lawsuit or filing any type of motions with the court, you're going to be paying either attorney's fees or you're going to be paying a private company to try to collect this child support payment. That's correct. Now, one thing is that um, another thing that sometimes payees resort to is going through child support enforcement, which is a nightmare or could be a nightmare for the payor because um, many, most states have provisions that if someone does not pay child support, their passport or license can be taken away. And sometimes there are inaccurate records. And I've, again, spoken to attorneys throughout the United States where their payor clients have lost their driver's license for years until they could straighten out with child support enforcement um, that, in fact, the payments were made. So if you're not required by your state to go through child support enforcement, this is an, an alternative way to do so. Um, and it, it also maintains the peace. You, p the children are not subjected to hearing that one party did not pay on time, therefore they can't in, uh, enroll in an activity. The kids are out of the mix. They don't have to deliver the child support payment at the end of visitation. Um, it really is a method of allowing ex uh, spouse, former spouses to take the financial issue out of the mix and then hopefully be able to work with each other on a more uh, less adversarial basis in non-monetary matters. But the other thing that they can do is if let's say the one party owes the other party money for um, half of the uncovered medicals, they can send that money via direct deposit as well. Now, when you keep uh, a track record of what it is, and you, and you raise an interesting point um, on what you keep a record of, will it designate child support payment or what you just gave an example of for a past medical payment, will it designate that on the actual tracking sheet medical payment? Well, typically what the child support payment is going to be is, is a, a set amount every pe period, whether it's monthly or, or um, bimonthly. So... Um, any other payments would necessarily be on, on uncovered or on extracurriculars or whatever. If you if you wanted it to uh, specify in the actual payment, can that be something that you'd be able to set up so that would if something would come down the line where my client would be um, had a, a motion filed against him for failure to comply with the court order, and he's using your system and he paid the extra monies for uncovered medical, would that be somehow designated on your tracking sheet so we can use that as proof to the court that here's the amount that was paid and here's what it was, here's what it was paid for? We uh, can't designate what it was paid for. What we can certify is the amount that went through, mm -hmm. and then your, re your client's records would match up the amount to whatever through invoices or through statements, whatever it was that it was paid for. I think the service is a really great service that is offered to uh, people who are under a court order to pay child support because not only is it beneficial to both sides, but it also is beneficial for both sides because it will help uh, cut down on post-litigation. Absolutely. What it does is it provides um, the courts with a way to stay out of it in terms of contempt if the parties can set up a way to regularly pay and then there's no violations. 
Um, what we've seen courts do as well is if there is a contempt hearing, um, they have the ability now to give the payor the opportunity to, to make the payments on the court um, computer, you know, using their credit card, sign on, log on, do what they need to do so that they will not have to go through um, potential penalties by the court. You've been, you practice in, in Georgia. Is this something that you, you recommend to your clients? Um, I, not only do I recommend it to my clients, but uh, the, our family law in Georgia has had the opportunity to hear and see um, the process, and they have accepted it overwhelmingly because they all find that it's anything that, that can be done to avoid clogging up the court system with um, litigation that takes away really from the children um, in terms of their financial resources is certainly a benefit to both parties and the children ultimately. Well, it's, it's really a win-win for everybody. You reduce the court docket and you reduce the post-litigation costs for people who went through you know, a, a costly divorce or a costly uh, paternity. Absolutely. Um, and the courts are thrilled with the prospect of having a reduction in their um, calendar with contempt action. Because, con as, as you probably know, it's extremely costly to pursue um, contempt actions. Um, there's a lot of discovery involved, attorney's fees. Sometimes you have expert witnesses if you need them. So the, the processing fee that the payor pays probably is, over the course of a year, equal to maybe two hours of attorney's fees, which would be eaten up in a blink of an eye if there was a contempt action. Sure. How long has this program um, been set up? We, um, we became uh, live on the, on the web in, in August, so it's been just about three or four months. And has it been a positive reaction to this? Absolutely. The attorneys think that it's a, um, a great method to, to allow par uh, parties not to engage in post-divorce conflict the participants find it to be advantageous on the payors end because there is an emotional um, psyche type thing when somebody has to write a check every every month or every uh, uh, twice a week, twice a month, and this eliminates them having to think about it. And it also gives the payor the ability to have an account history to prove when the payment's been made in terms of the recipient. Um, the recipient is thrilled not to have to run to the bank with a check and not have to not have to have to ask via email or telephone when the check is coming and here it's in the mail and um, consistently receive late payments. Now what is the process for once a child would emancipate and support payments would stop or if there is a reduction in child support? They would just notify us if they're set up on a recurring basis they would notify us of the new amount that they want charged. See, we're not an enforcement agency and we're not a collection agency. So it's all, uh, this whole thing is by private agreement. So it can be stopped at any time um, at, before the actual payment's been made, obviously. So if somebody on the 15th had a payment of $500 and then the next month there was a modification and it went down to 450 before we processed for the next month, they would just have to let us know. Um, so by private agreement, again, it's just it's a matter of us being notified, and then we can do whatever the payor indicates to us. Well, it's a, it's like I, you know, I said earlier, it's a great process, and um, I, I know I'm going to recommend it to my clients. I know if the people who are um, tuning into this will give it some serious thought. We'll go ahead and, and put your, your website, a link to it on our website, Ours is dadsdivorce.com. And again, if you could tell the people who are tuning in to us, what is, what is your website? It's www.supportcertain, it's all one word, dot com. And again, to the individuals who tune in to us, we're constantly updating our website, dadsdivorce.com. You can click on certain links. We have an Ask a Lawyer question, which if you want a certain issue discussed during one of our podcasts here, Click on that link, submit your question, and we'll be able to address it on one of our weekly broadcasts in which we do Ask a Lawyer.